and thank you very much for staring at us. This is still your election headquarters, and we are awaiting something pretty unique in our democratic history, the uh, public independent collection of pink sheets by a political party, the NDC in this case. The uh, parliamentarians of the NDC in parliament have decided that they will collate publicly, just like the EC would have done, their own pink sheets from the Techiman South constituency. The pink sheets that they've put together from the various polling centers, you know, they dispute the outcome of that particular election. The Electoral Commission has already declared that parliamentary seat for the MPP, a margin of uh, really close margins there. The, we are now learning from the NDC themselves that they have their own uh, collation, the pink sheets that they are about to tabulate. You can see on your screens there, uh, the parliamentary conference room where the, um, the leadership of the minority side are about to address the press. With me in the studio is uh, Winston Amwa and Raymond Aqua uh, as we watch this unfold before our very eyes. I mean, the Winston and, and, and Raymond, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, so th this, is, this is pretty unique. I mean, we've seen parties in the past uh, challenge elections, the best they will do is to take their pink sheets to the court, yeah. right? Um, because as we say, court is the, is the only authority that can reverse an election's outcome. But they, as we see, this approach is unique because they want to do the collation individually of the of all the polling centers and the pink sheets. Well, what's, what's your take on this, Winston? Well, I mean, so it looks like the, this is in line with the NDC stance on elections. It, I mean, if you listen to Johnson Asiri Nketia on the probe, he had indicated that uh, one of the options available to the NDC was to engage in protest and was to let the public see or understand why they believe that the election results are flawed and were rigged in favor of the governing NPP. And so by publicly collating results, and what they seek to do is to prove that if you look at their results, their candidate won with about 50,000 votes or more, it will feed into their belief that this election was rigged and to get the public to understand why they've resorted to street protests. So for me, I, I, I sincerely do believe that it's part of their strategy. What they're seeking to do is to court public sympathy even before that, that's if they choose to go to court, but to let the public know that, look, we're telling you that elections were rigged and these are the reasons why we say the elections have been rigged. Yeah, I mean, then the, we wait to see um, indeed what the outcome of this collation is. Really? Yeah, certainly, watch it from this end. The first claims that the NDC made were that they had won this seat as part of the 140, mm. that to them they had already won prior to even the AC coming out to who won that particular seat. Beyond that, there were calls for them to give us details. Then they started by saying specifically the constituencies they claim they have flipped and the ones that are going to go in their direction. There were further calls for them to be specific about the issues that are outstanding. Because the Electoral Commission then came out and said Tetim and South was outstanding, they left it out of the list of issues that consistently they were convinced about and later on came to tell us that, well, Tetim and South is for us. We know what has happened there. We know the ballot box issues that actually been raised by people. Then people started demanding for specific figures. So the sequence suggests that at every point in time, the NDC had come up to say that this is not in contention. We want it. We know that they are trying to reverse it. We've sent people there. And you saw that viral video, the viral video where the general secretary, the director of operations, and many other people had gone to that particular constituency office and asked the man in charge of it. That is the returning officer for that particular constituency demanding something specific. And the demand was that we need you to give us exactly the statement or poll that you collated at the collation center and that will determine whether or not we lost this seat you remember that viral video yeah. that viral video became topical because people were then believing that why are you refusing to give a party in an election what they are asking of you now the ndc says that forget about that collation sheet because the electoral commission says they put it out there proud to the ndc demanding it we have all the polling station results Every single statement of poll and declaration of results from every single police station in Tetiman South, which should suggest to us that we won the election. What we'd be interested in is whether these are authentic pink sheets, if you want to call them, too. Whether or not when they contradict what the EC has put out there, 
what is the basis for the contradiction so largely we can then drill down to the main const the main police stations where there are main contentions so if out of the many police stations in Techiman south it is five where that, that of the EC, the NPP, and the, and the NDC have different figures, then we can say that what happened at these five polling stations? How come the parties differ on the numbers here? Then we can resolve it and move it to the level of coalition that we can now say, or the NDC can say that, this is where we are taking to court. This is where we are disputing the issues. I'm sure the NDC also understands something that's going into this engagement, that from now to January 7th, and it is the night before January 7 that a new speaker will be chosen. They need 30 men south to be at the same number or more than the number of the current government, that is the NPP. So NDC needs it to get to 138. 138 will make them the majority in the parliament of the Republic of Ghana. And that's how crucial this particular seat is. Without that, this number, they are just at 137 with the NPP. With that outstanding independent man determining to sit with the NPP, that will go against them. So that's how important this is. As to whether or not this will change the Electoral Commission's mind or get it to go back to do recollation, it's a different thing altogether. As has been explained, mostly, a court will be the appropriate forum to tell them that Electoral Commission, this is what the NDC is saying. This is what we also believe is happening. We want an independent probe into what really is supposed to happen. I think the NDC is adopting this posture, especially for the minority and those in parliament, because of the time frame they have to do all of this. Because they know that it is very important they get a higher number before January 6th. Going into that, it might not be useful getting more numbers. Raymond, hold your horses. Let's listen now to Haran Edrisu. With you on the Chima South. And you understand why we are bent on ensuring that we protect the sovereign will of the people of Techima South, the sovereign will of the people of Ghana that gave us a mandate, a mandate to be the majority party with 138 seats, with Techima South inclusive. Whilst we protest the presidential outcome at another forum that also will be discussed, and numbers shared with you. So for our purposes today, the minority caucus will just focus on Techima South. What will intrigue and surprise you is that we will give you full details of the pink sheets we have so jealously protected in the last two weeks. It is in our possession because we are diligent enough to have it in our possession for Techima South. And then be informed, ladies and gentlemen of the media, I am not and no member of the minority caucus is purporting to perform the role of the Electoral Commission, nor purporting to hold ourselves as officers of the Electoral Commission, nor purporting to make a declaration of any resource. But when we share our facts with you, you would come to that one acceptable, irresistible conclusion that it is our seat, nothing more. So what we have called you to do, we are not the Electoral Commission. We are not officers of the Electoral Commission. We are members and leaders of a political party which took part in a presidential and parliamentary contest. And data, data available to us is what we will share with you. Data given to us lawfully and legitimately per the laws of Ghana. So very soon, the deputy majority leader who understands statistics and arithmetic better than I do, at least better than me and Jean Mensah, because uh, she, can change her, she can change her computation six times. And uh, for the media, even today or tomorrow, I'll be, I'll be citing the Washington Post of the United States for contempt in respect of a misleading publication in the Washington Post which puts President Nana Dudankwa at 51 point Gmensa percent as we know of the presidential uh, uh, elections. Uh, that is misleading. Uh, so that is why the chairperson of the Electoral Commission must understand that numbers talk, figures talk, and there are legal implications of those numbers and figures within the meaning of Article 63 and Article 64 of the 1992 Constitution. So ladies and gentlemen of the press, get the premise right. We are not here.
purporting to act as officers of the Electoral Commission. But it's only in Anadu Downquest, uh, Ghana, that you go to a returning officer and a district officer asking for resource as collated, certified, and declared. And we are to go to the regional office. You go to the regional office led by a nominee person, then our general secretary we are to come back to the district office. And ladies and gentlemen of the media, appreciate us. Techima Saf will be used as president tomorrow as we walk the journey of multi-party constitutional democracy. So it can happen tomorrow in the Honorable Dr. Ayeni's constituency. It can happen tomorrow in the Honorable ABA Fuseni constituency where results are declared and you are told that go to returning officer, go to district officer, go to regional officer. And in that uncertainty and confusion, somebody is purporting to be an elected member of parliament. So those of you who don't appreciate what we are fighting, it goes beyond Techima South to the heart, the roots, and the branches of multi-party constitutional democracy. If this travesty of electoral injustice is made to stand, it will become a rule of thumb for future elections, for people just to be denied legitimate victories won, reflecting the sovereign will of the people as expressed in Article 2 of the 1992 Constitution, that sovereignty shall reside in the people of Ghana. So the sovereign will of the people of the Chima South is for Christopher Beyre to be their candidate, an NDC candidate. So tactfully media again, as I engage you, deputy leader is working in shortly with our team. You must appreciate what the MPP is seeking to do. Take Techima South by force, compulsory, using state brute force and intimidation. Get a speaker sworn in and yield it, even if it is a court process, back to the NDC. That is all we are seeking to avoid. So Techima South and his decision is critical to our posture and what we will do going forward as a majority caucus. We are very certain that we are 138. We are not going to sit down for anybody to rob us of that seat. If they want compromises, we are open to it lawfully and legitimately as we look into the numbers. This morning, I should commend my colleagues, all the gallant men and women who accompanied me to the offices of the Electoral Commission. We note, we note that she refused to receive us, she refused to acknowledge us, and contemptuously refused even to receive a lawful and harmless petition we are seeking to provide. That also serves a good precedent for us as a country that elected representatives of the people can be ignored as she did. You know me, you know me well. I'm still an elected MP for Tamale South, and I'll serve on that special budget committee of the Electoral Commission. We would ignore her back and would disrespect her back. We will, we will, we will, we will reward her and reciprocate her with the same contemptuous posture and attitude going forward into the A parliament. We would work with her in the shadows, but we would demand accountability from her. So, Deputy Leader, you are here. The single ladies and gentlemen of the press. So, the media. I'll do the first phase. Deputy leader will take place. You see, we have told you that this open robbery, this time we have them cage. This is our pink sheets for the Chima South. At every stage, we will share with you the pink sheet as certified, including MPP rep signature on the certified sheet. Yet you go against this and make an unlawful declaration. You go against this and make a fraudulent declaration. You go against this, even CI 127, Regulation 43, which requires that you certify polling station by polling station for purpose of aggregation and coalition. 
So, ladies and gentlemen of the press, this press conference is called to order it to be in two phases. My face is what I have started. So, once again, let me uh, appreciate the media for attending and for your coverage of our event this morning. It's refreshing and heartwarming for us. The political objectives we sought to achieve were well achieved. So, to my colleagues, Commendations and kudos to you all for supporting us to present that harmless uh, petition. Now, let me send a strong warning to the police that the new patriotic party government will not rule Ghana forever. They will not rule forever. We will continue to work with police that are professional, not police that think that they can be compelled by the power of the state to undermine, to undermine our rights and freedoms. Parliament remains a guardian of our fundamental human rights and freedoms and our right to walk and to protest and to present a petition. Let me acknowledge the presence of Second Deputy Speaker, the Honorable Alban Sumana Bagbin, who has come to join the caucus that he so well led so we, 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 you will soon discover why the new patriotic party in Kohus with the electoral commission is refusing to collate and declare the parliamentary results of the Chimasaf in flagrant violation of regulation 43 of CI 127 for the NDC, PC, and parliamentary candidate Christopher Beire and know that he has a lawful duty and he has a lawful obligation to be represented at the counting and coalition justified legally under the laws of Ghana. May I now respectfully, Deputy Leader, I'm handing over to you. You go polling station by polling station and distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the media, I repeat, we are not the Electoral Commission. We are not purporting to be officers of the Electoral Commission. We are stakeholders and candidate interested parties in the 2020 presidential and parliamentary election. So I want to demonstrate to you why Techima cannot be taken away from the NDC majority caucus, no matter what. If the laws of Ghana, if the laws of Ghana are respected, if the electoral laws of Ghana are respected, those of you saying that go to court, go to court, go to court with what? You want me to go to court with a mask? I must go to court with a certified collated resource. If even I'm dissatisfied, then I can tell the court that I'm dissatisfied with this. Let anybody from any media house, including the international media, share with me their evidence of a copy of certified collated resource for Techima South Parliamentary State. This is shameful to the Electoral Commission of Ghana, that you conduct an election two weeks into it, neither the candidate nor his representative or even the NDC as an interested party can boast of an official copy of the outcome of that elections. The returning officer is required under CI 127, if they have their declaration, to post a copy in the constituency office. I have mine for Tamale South. So, for Tachima South, Deputy Leader, Deputy Leader, leaders through. So, collect media, follow. Wherever you want to inspect the pink sheet, they are here. But we, we are not the Electoral Commission. We are not purporting to be. But we are fighting the injustice. The injustice which led to the loss of life of Ayarik and Tajuddin, the only justice we can get for them to their memory is for the truth of who lawfully and legitimately won Techima Saf, determined by a certified collated resource, is declared in accordance with law by the Electoral Commission. They collated and recollated in Banda. An important principle of the rule of law is not just natural justice, but equality of the law. There can be no laws for MPP and different laws for NDC. 
in the Banda constituency, three coalitions were done at the request of the new patriotic party. We demand same. Deputy leader, you know your arithmetic and uh, statistics. At least if for nothing at all, you won't come with such corrections. And your thank percentage, thank your percentage thank you, thank will you be very 100. You will exceed 100 percent. God bless. Colleagues, thank you. Thank you, leader. Thank you very much. And then uh, good meet to uh, our listeners and then the media. We thank you very much. What we are coming to do this evening is very simple. This is what we are asking uh, Electoral Commission to do. It's a matter of adding one to another one. One plus one. It's two, it's not three. So um, I'm going to demonstrate to you what we did this afternoon. After um, our walk to the EC office, a team was tasked to look at the pink sheets. So we look at all the 267 pink sheets from all the 267 uh, polling stations from the Ketu, uh, Techiman South. Now, traditionally, they have 265, but there were two police stations for the special voting. That made it 267. So we have looked at all the pink sheets. What we did was to take the pink sheets one by one. You make reference to the police station code, and then also the police station name. Then you look at the total vote obtained by the candidates. In Tejima South, there were only two candidates for the parliamentary. That is the MPP represented by, that is the candidate, Martin uh, Kokukosa. And then NDC, Christopher Mbeyere uh, Basongi. Basongi. Now, these are the two candidates. So if you take the pink sheets, you look at the number, the vote obtained by each of them, and we record it. Now, if you take the first one, if you look on the board, uh, the screen, you see the first police station that we have here. And uh, we can ask the dean of the press corps to come for a copy and then, and, uh, then and verify. Wait. Now, if you look at the first one, the police station code. Is K zero one one three zero four B, and then the name of the police station is D A J H S Kenton one. Now, the total eligible voters on that register is four hundred and fifty nine. Then, the vote obtained by the MPP candidates is one hundred and nine, and then. The vote obtained by the NDC candidates is 222. Rejected ballots, four. That gives you a total vote cast of three, three, five. Now, if you go to the next one, which the police station code is K010901A, the name is DA Experimental Primary. School, Techiman, Zongo 1. The total eligible voters, 594. Vote obtained by the MPP candidates, 194. And the vote obtained by the NDC candidate, 262. One rejected ballot. Give you a total of 457 total vote cast. This is what we, we did for all the 200 and 67. And uh, I don't know whether I should go one by one. Yeah. So let me just demonstrate. I'm, I'm not going to go according to this one. I'll go here, pick a, a police station, then I'll retrieve it from the system and show you the, the figure. Now, this is a polling station code. Um, K zero one zero one zero one A. So you see me demonstrate how I'm going to retrieve that one. So I'm looking for K zero one zero one zero one A. 
So I pick it. That is it. Methodist JHS Techima 1. The vote obtained by the MPP candidate is 340, 348. The NDC candidate, 128. Rejected ballot, 5. And the total, 481. Now, the pink sheet is here. You can zoom your camera to, to capture it if you want. Some of them are very faint, so you need to look at it critically before you can get a figure accurately. So that is one police station. Now we can go to the next one on this sheet. Which one? The, the B. So what I'll do is I'll just go and pick B. I'll do away with A and pick the B. And that gives me the figure. So the total eligible voters, 601. The vote obtained by the MPP candidate, 386. The NDC candidate, 113. Rejected, 2. Give you a total of 501. Now, the 501 is captured on the pink sheet as the total vote cast. And then the candidate vote are also obtained there. Now, the two agents for the two candidates have all signed the pink sheet for uh, MPP candidates. The MPP candidate, the agent is Amorin James. He signed. And then the NDC candidate, Sule Isifu, also signed. So that is it. So we can take another one. We are just picking it so that we can see the... Now the presiding officer is Aganda Derek. Now let me go to another pink sheet. Uh, Deputy Leader, go back to your slide where we had a long list and be repeating it in that order. You had, you had when you started with the polling station. Go back. Yes. Uh, good. Remain focused. We have the patience. Be going through that. Then they will be seeing the numbers. Then when you get to the totals, you show it to them. We are patient. All right. As my, but very quickly, they will be seeing. They will see the screen. Let all right. So, so maybe what I do is that um, down sampling. No. instead of repeating all these figures, I, I, I can move gradually yes. when they see the, the figure. I can, I can mention them. Um, for instance, if you come to the Chiman Senior High School, uh, there are two police stations, A and B. The A, the, the MPP candidates got 324. The NDC candidate got 71. At B, MPP candidate got 313. NDC candidate got 84. Now, this is, and if you go, go on, uh, for instance, if you come to DA Primary School, is it Kofosu? Kofosu. The MPP got 146, NDC got 273, rejected 6. The next one, MPP got 311. Baptist Primary School, Techima 1. MPP 311, NDC 233, rejected 4. The next one, Apostolic Church, NDC, MPP candidate 174. Mayanka, Apostolic Church, Mayanka, Kodimasi Techima 1. The total votes there, 653. Vote obtained by the MPP candidate, 176. And the vote obtained by the NDC candidate, 262, rejected 8. And then next, next one, you can go to Jako JHS Techima 2. Total vote on the register, 469. Vote obtained by the MPP candidate, 118. Vote obtained by the NDC candidate, 244. Rejected, 5. Deputy Leader, wherever you are, mention the MPP and NDC agent. 
assigned onto the pink sheet for purpose of the media and the Ghanaian public. We intend to share these details with the European Union, the US Embassy, the African Union, the ECOWAS team, they are all following. So let's share. Yeah, uh, okay. For instance, for the Jaco JHS Techiman 2, uh, which has the polling station code as K011202A, the agent, the presiding officer is Yakubu Adams, uh, who signed the pink sheets for the candidate, for the MPP um, candidates. The agent is Yakubu Musa T. He also signed. Then for the NDC candidates, the agent is Tanya Richard. He also signed. And the media, you may take one minute. Any of you can come and pick any of those samples. So continue in that pattern. Now, so the next one is Jack OJHS B. The total number on the register is 478. The MPP candidates got 167. And then the MPP candidate, NDC candidate got 220. Rejected ballot four. Now, uh, Jaco Techiman uh, 2B, 203B. 203B. Is here. Now, here, the presiding officer is Benjamin Edu Fosu. Benjamin Edu Fosu. The agent for the MPP candidate is Musa Abdullah. Then the agent for the NDC candidate, Yusuf Abdul Razak. They all signed, including the, the agent, no, the presiding officer. Now, if you go to the next one, which is 30203A, the total number on the register is 480. The vote obtained by the MPP candidate is 179. Vote obtained by the NDC candidate, 200, and the rejected ballot, 5. Now, that station, the presiding officer is Mohammed Latif. Mohammed Latif is the presiding officer. He signed. The agent for the MPP candidate is Haruna Sedu. He also signed. The agent for the NDC candidate, Abdullah Ibrahim, he also signed. It is here for the media to verify. Now, the next station is uh, Apostolic Church. I think I've mentioned this already. There are three. So this is, this is I mentioned one. This is another one. Uh, the total vote on the register is 505. The vote obtained by the MPP candidate, 141. Vote obtained by the NDC candidate, 254. And the rejected ballot, two. And for that station, the presiding officer is Zakinani Ibrahim. Zakinani Ibrahim. He signed the pink sheets. The agent for the MPP candidate is Isaac Dayan. He also signed the agent for the NDC candidate, Bissom Bawa Simon. He also signed. It is here for the media to verify. Now, if you go to Baptist JHS Techiman with a police station code K0. 10A03A. The total vote on the register is 376. The vote obtained by the MPP candidate, 187. And the vote obtained by the NDC candidate, 117. No rejected ballots. That is uh, Baptist JHS Techima 1. 
code 10A03A. The pain sheets is here. The presiding officer is Adasi Fofie Vera. The candidate for the agent for MPP candidates is Ajay Jemfi Emmanuel. He signed the NDC candidate agent is Suleimana Adam Yusuf. He also signed. And then the presiding officer, Vera, also signed. It is here for the media to verify. Now, we can go to the next one. Let's look at the arms clinic, Techima, with a police station code k 0 one zero a zero five b the chima one the total number on the register is five hundred and thirty nine the total vote obtained by the mpp candidates is one hundred and ninety nine the ndc candidate obtained two hundred and forty four and one rejected ballot and for that the pink sheet says that the Presiding officer is Patrick Ajay in team, who signed the pink sheets. The MPP candidate's agent is Mustafa Yaya. The NEC candidate agent is Osma Saad. He also signed. It is here for the media. Now, we have all this. Uh, leader, I don't know if I should continue. Because I want to go to the total column. Don't go to the total. We're dancing small, small as they are watching the numbers. So uh, we'll be helping you, leader, go to go beyond DA primary school with less speed. So they are seeing the numbers. So we'll be watching it. Tamale station. Tamale station. Techima or not Tamale. So the station. SDA, you've seen the numbers. Just be. be so I just want no, to randomly no, pick. A, a no, don't pick yet. Okay. You'll be going. They are watching. SDA press with school. They've seen it. Brigade one. Move. No, no. Move. Move. Uh, be going. Be going. Okay. So you are seeing the numbers. 120 against 145. 159 against 138. That is uh, Kondo Filling Station. Wando, yes. Evangelism Bible Research Ministry. Techima. You see 230 against 96, MPP and DC respectfully. And then you see RC Primary School. Move on. 165 to 158. We are just sharing with you. The media, this is for your purpose. Be following it closely. Be moving until you get to 267. So we are giving you every detail. Then we are challenging you, the media and international observers, the US Embassy, EU, ECOWAS, AU. Challenge the EC to produce their coalition. And there are summary sheet, statement of poll, and summary results for the public and for the world. We will not accept this electoral fraud on the weight of this compelling statistical evidence that we are sharing with you. Leader, so move on, move on. So I'm your, I'm your preparatory primary school. You've seen it? 242, no, no, you've gone too far. They need to see it. Amiyao, the Amiyao is a, is a popular name there, so. Is, is the first one there? Primary school. Yeah, 242, 242 and 108. And then Islamic primary school, you see it. 175 against 316. Move on, leader. Okay. So, uh, temporary structure, 78 against 434. Move on. Next one, uh, new Onyanasi Islamic primary, 99 against 225. Then San Sama 1, 145, 152. San Sama 2, 276, 264. Then SDA Church Blue Cross 1, 213, 129. Then San Sama 1, DA Primary 165, 133. Uh, Blue Cross, San Sama 1. Uh, the code. 
So leader, okay. go to the totals now. Just see the totals. Yeah, we'll I come want, back I want to, to do that, San Sama one. Uh, the code is K zero one one zero zero one A, and uh, D A Primary School, San Sama one. Now the pin sheet says the presiding officer, officer is up by ED. He signed the pin sheets. The agent for the MPP candidate is Anas Issa. He also signed. Then the agent for the NDC candidate is Amiyao Gordon. He also signed. And then some of it, when the presiding officer signs with the MPP, share the time with the media, the sign, time of signing for the record. He and signed then, at 6.52 p.m. 6.52 p.m. on the 7th of December 2020. So move, so now, I move now to the, to the total. total. So follow it. It's not just going to be a total. It will lead an aggregation leading to that total. And to appreciate that even with the NDC, we want to know our margin of victory. That's why this is important. The Electoral Commission must collate. We think that our margin of victory, let him get to the numbers and I'll share with you. Are you following? So see how the NDC becomes a majority party in the eighth parliament. Leader, proceed further to the totals. Okay. To the total, okay. Now, so, colleague, this is... What? No, it's okay. Slowly. They are following. The media is for the move. We'll share it with you, but the pin sheet is our property. What? They can look at the pin sheet there if you want. I can, I, can, I can put this into a summary form and print it for the media. We encourage you to do that. So do that. But let's see where, where we become what they are robbing us of. So this is daylight. Now this is a, a simple uh, Excel uh, spreadsheet total. If you, if you do any system to collate, to verify, you need to do just... Uh, spreadsheets to see the total there that will never fail you so now, you see if you if you see the total for the mpp candidate is 50,013 now for you to be sure that this this total covers every item what you need to do no to, mention the ndc total no I'll, I'll, I'll come i'll come there i'll come there what you need to do is to double click here if you double click, you will see that it covers, you see the blue column? It covers up to the first item on the sheets. So you are summing up from 109 way down to 49. That gives you that total. That will never fail you. So average as Excel spreadsheet is equal to 50, Now the total 000. for the NDC candidate is 50,306. And, and we think that a recollection will open. And, 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 and the, same, the same method that we use to sum up that of the ND, MPP candidate is the same we use to sum up for the NDC candidate as well. Far away from the 222 to the last figure of 149. And that gives you the total there. Now, to find the difference between the two is to subtract one from another. And the difference is 293. I've heard some people in the media say that, oh, he won by only 16 votes. Titus Global won by only three, three votes. votes. Cine West was so 16. 293. The media this is what we want electoral commission to do. To do. Simple demand. In accordance with law. Because we have the pin sheet. They also have the pin sheet. The, the pin sheets were given to our agent Party agents by the electoral commission. So bring the pin sheet. Let's verify the figures. You have your pin sheets with what we have, all the parties. Then we know that the, the pin sheets have not been changed. So, uh, or nothing has been done to the pin sheet. Then you collate like we did here, it will show the difference we are giving you. And our candidate, um, Christopher Beyere, 
he declared the winner of this election. Maybe there is more. So uh, thank you very much. Deputy Leader, I can only be grateful on behalf of the caucus, distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the media. You see how high tech the caucus have gone. And this is a minority statistically accurate. And we cannot be in denial. It can only be one of a perpetrated fraud of a collusion between the ruling government and a compromised electoral commission. Nowhere in our fourth republic history have electoral officers struggled to share declared resource with candidates and with representatives of candidates. So the number speaks for itself. Those of you who understand law, I'll borrow my small thought law, rest ipsa. Rest ipsa, the number speaks for itself. So we know and we demand that this be done before 7th January. That is our demand, not a coalition after or somebody saying that go to court. Go to court. Banda, did you go to court? You asked for coalition. It was done. Equality of the law. Natural justice. Do same. What is good for the goose must be good for the gander. There cannot be different set of laws for, laws for the MPP and another set for the NDC. We're open to answer your questions. We're open for you to come and examine our pinches and we take them into our confidential archives again. We thank you very much for coming. Then the British High Commission, the American Embassy, on our veggie, you have to print copies and serve on the EU, the UN, the US Embassy, ECOWAS and the African Union and the UN and the UN team which was in Ghana. The British High Commission, I understand, is fully religiously. I believe the Americans are doing the same because our democracy means a lot to them just as it means to us. And this fatal bruises, fatal bruises to our democratic journey can undermine our collective cause, quest for a peaceful, stable, democratic Ghana. We remain very peaceful people. We are asking our people to exercise their rights within those uh, limits. Uh, Deputy Leader, you have made my work easier for 7th January 9th. So media, we turn over to you. Yep. Alaji ABF is who is helping me from the Communications Committee? Go ahead. Identify yourself, use a the mic then. Uh, Leader, good afternoon and thank you so much. And my name is Ajama Mays and I report for gbconline.com. Uh, leader, many Ghanaians are not too clear about the situation or what will happen on January 7th should Parliament constitute new, uh, Ghana constitute new Parliament. We want to know, educators, legally, now that we have 137, 137 plus one, uh, one independent. I'm coming to that because you made the point that the EC to do the coalition before that day. So EC refused to do that and situation stand today. How are you going to manage parliament? In terms of I don't answer hypothetical questions. What I'm simply saying that the 137 of MPP less one gives them 136. Add one to NDC 138. There will be a clear majority party, and that will be important going forward. Appreciating what should happen on seven. Yes, sir. City FM. Then after that, Ibrahim. Okay. Leader, um, you you've indicated today that you would not countenance the presence of the Electoral Commission. What happens if they decide that they are bending to your demand and would want to collate these results once again? How they does that they cannot happen? correct the events of the morning. What stands is that we feel disrespected. They, were, they treated us contemptuously as representatives of the people and members of parliament. We will reciprocate same gestures when they ever visit parliament. Don't forget we will approve the EC's budget. So that is why we must demonstrate reciprocal respect. What we're doing, there's nothing untoward about it. I've heard people questioning that. I wrote to the Electoral Commission yesterday, despite the letter around this time, they got it this morning, whatever it is, I wrote formally. We also informed the Marshal's office and the police here. That is what we are required to do. It's not every matter that I should walk to the IGP office or police headquarters. That's why you have the parliamentary police here. 
So we did what is within the law. Public order is to achieve public order. We did not disturb the public order. They sought to disturb it. Can you imagine if we had stayed there for the next one, two hours? We are all representing people who could come to our support and to our aid. But we cherish the peace of the country. We work to preserve it, but we will not accept injustice. Ibrahim Al Hassan, G20 TV Star FM. Leader, your demand is for a recollation before January 7. The, collation. 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 The AC claims it has done collation. The, the minority. If you have a copy of the AC declaration, the, the share with us to support your question. So your demand is for collation. Can you share your AC declaration with us with so that I can answer you? I don't have it. If you have share with me. I understand you, leader. I say share your declaration. Oh, there's, no, there, indeed, there is a video. In fact, there was declaration. No video. But the way ah, this manner, no video. This the way and manner it was done. I understand the questions you are raising. There is indeed a video from Tetiman South where the presiding officer, the returning officer, declares a winner. In the, the way in and manner it was done, add, I understand. Add in, the, add in the absence of the NDC candidate and his representative. The reason why I'm saying to CI, I understand the concerns. 127 Regulation 43. Okay, learn with your question. Yes, the reason why I'm saying I understand your concerns. But my question is that the EC is actually going on break tomorrow, and that's public knowledge. How confident are you that before January 7 next year, what you demanded so, will be fulfilled? EC on holidays. Ghana has had EC since 1993. Have they been going on this? 1992. EC have been going on holidays. The media must go and prove how long they went and when they went. They are a public service. Under the public service, I'm not aware that any Ghanaian public service can just declare tomorrow that I'm on holidays. I'll come after 19 days. That should rather, that should rather make you suspicious. You know that the government say that if you are running in a market, if in a marketplace you are running, and yet you have done no wrong, why will you be running in a market space where there's no space? So I leave it there. Next question. <laughs> On the video, Bin Laden, you want to respond? Yes, the Chima Saf, our election director, NDC. He is preserving the pinches on our behalf. Thank you very much. I visited him in Tachima. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, I overheard the media man say that uh, he saw in a video the returning of that declaring results. That's seriously wrong. The returning officer was never, never, never declaring results. What he was doing was this. There was this polling station where there was controversy. Polling station code K012301B, DAJHS Hansa 1B. That polling station, the municipal electoral officer, Samson of Origin, he claimed that his presiding officer could not complete work on the original pink sheet. And so he did not have that pink sheet. Our investigation also revealed that our agent was equally attacked and left the polling station, so we could not also have the duplicate. So the struggle there was because the MPP had a duplicate, which according to us was definitely a manufactured one. So we were not going to allow the presiding officer to use the results of that pink sheet from the MPP to enter the results. So if you saw the scaffold that was happening, it is because he was holding on to an MPP pink sheet which we were not agreeing to, to enter results for a particular polling station. That was the argument. He was never in any way declaring results for the records. And repeat that there was no coalition. You were there. Yes. Repeat it for the record. Coalition, properly so-called, never, never, never happened at the coalition center for the records. So to the media, it's not just about the Chimas of Ghana's democratic journey. Tomorrow, just declare any results, find a few police and soldiers who are malleable, and then declare that you are the one in control. Grievous threat to our democracy. That injustice is what we are fighting. It's not just about today. So, the two ladies and gentlemen of the media, come and inspect the pinches. We are done. God bless you. Last, last Thank you, leader. My name is Simona Genap. Uh, according to the NDC now, you have Techma South seat at your disposal. Uh, if you are unable to get the results, 
If you are unable to get the results, are we going to see two MPs elect sworn into office on the 7th of the January? We want an MP legitimately declared on the basis of legally certified results in accordance with the laws of Ghana and in particular with CI 127 Regulation 43. We want to see the summary of poll. But as to what we do, leave it to us when we get there. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, the Honorable Deputy Leader and our team are here. You can watch, but we'll take our pink sheets away. It's become the most jealous gold in the country because it answers the question on the balance of power. They just want to deny an NDC a parliamentary majority. You can understand them. And I beg if you want for the media again, you can dance through. Yeah, uh, Lydia, I want to show. I want to show the media um, something just so that when they are doing their reportage, they know how to report on it. If you look at the the total eligible voters for Turkey Man South, it's twenty eight thousand one. Sorry, one twenty eight thousand and twenty one votes. One twenty eight thousand and twenty one. Now, if you add up the total vote obtained by the two candidates, the valid, valid vote obtained by the two candidates, and you add a rejected ballot to it, you get a total of 101.238. So um, you will see the voter turnout to be. Um, not, I want to get a percentage. So the voter turnout is 79 percent. So about 28,000 there about, or 26,000 26, so people leader, did not turn out to, the to vote. So the winning difference, the two so, so, is a result so of the the candidates, the NDC candidate has won with a difference of 293 votes. So the electoral commission to, should do what is legally appropriate to go and collate and declare the legitimate candidate. We are for the, the for the presidential, we want the presidential with a difference of six thousand votes. We 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 want a presidential with a difference of more than six thousand votes. More than six thousand votes. Uh, President Mahama won, Mama won Nechima. with a difference of more than six thousand votes. In fact, the uh, MPP Nanado got. 46,379 and the president elect John Mahama got 52,034 so if you find a difference it's more than 6,000 uh, vote difference so that is it and then our parliamentary candidate won with a difference of 293 votes thank you so yeah, he's the one that that yes, he should come out and that declare him and so get that him sworn. When in. when on the seventh he can be sworn. Well, in. Let them see you. Thank you very much. So st statistically, as it stands, statistically as it stands, we expect the easy to do what is legally appropriate and get him properly declared and properly gazetted. God bless you. We are done. You can expect the pinches.